The Celtic Exchange, a fresh insight on Celtic Football Club. This is episode 70 of the Celtic Exchange Weekly. This is Tino and this week I'm delighted to be joined by Muffin James as we cover all things Celtic in our very first show of the new 2022-23 season. Just before Callum McGregor lifted the league trophy at Celtic Park back in the 14th of May, Ange picked up the mic and declared once again that we never stop, much to the delight of the adoring home support. Here at the Celtic Exchange, however, we decided to completely ignore Ange's advice and did indeed stop for a pre-season break of our own to get ourselves in peak condition for the season ahead. On that note, the hard work has clearly paid off and I'm pleased to report that Miff and James are undoubtedly in the shape of their lives ahead of the new season, where along with the rest of the team, we'll now be back with our weekly show and more from here until the very last kick of the ball. Miff, I'm sure we'll have you at peak match fitness in no time, but meantime, how do you think Celtic have been shaping up over the last few weeks? Hello Tino, hello James, hello guys uh, and gals. Um, I don't know about peak physical Fitness, I'm, I'm You're very, very close to it. I've not, I've, 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 I've clocked in just back from a holiday, so clocked in, um, to use a racing term, a few pounds overweight. Um, so I probably need to work on that. And uh, suffering from bruised slash cracked ribs. Aye. Uh, aye, aye. Heavy challenge off the ball. Surfing incident. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, I was surfing in Newquay. My first time, I hasten to add. Managed to stay on twice, I think, out of about probably 40 attempts, but I'll not take bad. it. I'll take it. This is what the listeners are here for. Nah, no, 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 no. Just, well, just a bit of personal info. Got you. Um, in terms of Celtic, to, to my eyes, seems to be going well. I think the two crucial bits of business we needed have been done. Um, we needed some backup for Taylor. We've got that as well. So um, f- for me, getting the, the business done early is not something we're, we're really synonymous with, but we've done it. Probably get the feeling we need another central midfielder with the fact... Rogic and, and Beaton have gone. Souza seemed to be the, the man that we wanted and, and didn't get, albeit that we know through what happened with McGree. We've normally got a plan B lined up fairly quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And, and I don't know, there's something with me saying that could be doing with another striker. I know Jordan Larson's been linked fairly heavily. I think that's just a, a kind of romantic notion more than anything that might feasibly happen. That's just my opinion anyway. But um, I still think getting a jetty out and getting another credible striker in there is something we should look for. James, it's been nearly two months since Celtic last kicked the ball competitively. How are you feeling in general? Obviously, you know, Miff's quite buoyant about things, but how are you feeling about the work that's been done since the end of the season? Very similar. I mean, it feels like the first time in my lifetime Celtic have gone into a pre-season uh, with a plan, you know, an actual plan to execute and they're executing on it successfully. You know, the two big ones, Carter Vickers, Jota, um, one out of two had been happy with, but to get the two of them, delighted. So, it, it does look like, you know, Angie's just had his plan. Saw we about the pre-season last week, missed Saturday's game. They're looking fresh, hungry. Um, there's a lot of good energy there. So it's just getting these next few games under our belt. Finish the uh, the squad building, by clearing out and kick on from there. So yeah, it's, it's been a long time. So it's uh, looking forward to getting back on it. Yeah, definitely. Are you going to get uh, Michael Nicholson in the back of your, your new home top? Big Mac Nick. He's the man. He's doing his job, I'll tell you. Um, okay, so first of all, we'll take a good look here at uh, transfer ins and outs. Um, incomings, first of all. So it's obviously, you know, over the course of any summer, the topic that, that generally dominates the conversation. This season's no different. Fans are clamouring for, you know, who's next and, you know, you know what, what's happening. But like you say, Muff, you know, we've got some good, you know, early transfer business taken care of. The big news, I think, is definitely Jota and Carter Vickers, uh, you know, we're crying out for it. We had the ongoing debate last season, if you could have one or the other and all that stuff. We've got both and, and that's got to be good news, first of all. Absolutely. And, and the test in these situations always is, and we've seen it before, with others that have came on loan and, and effectively advanced their careers. Um, well, some have, some haven't, to be fair. Um, Jason Denier would be somebody who I would think of, who I would have really liked to have signed, went on, had a poor spell at, at Sunderland, but then eventually went on, is now captain of Leon and um, Paddy Roberts is the obvious other one. We can't go a, a episode without mentioning him. Um, but you know, great talent. Again, we didn't sign him, and it probably was to the detriment of his own career. I, I would say, albeit that he now looks to have found a home in, in Sunderland. For me, the test is: is is your team weaker if you don't sign those two players? Arguably, it would have been. Mm-hmm. We would have lost a huge amount of creativity and um, and goals in in, in Jota. And we know how hard they are to replace, and we would have lost a lot of stability in, in Carter Vickers 
So if they go back to their parent clubs and they, they get given a chance, how much are you then needing to spend to replace them? It would have been more than the fees that we've agreed to sign them for. So all in all, brilliant business. And again, I think for, genuinely for the first time, if I can remember, a, a loan to buy option being exercised by Celtic and done, you know, somebody coming, showing that they're, they're of the required standard to play for Celtic and us getting the deal done without somebody else coming in, sweeping them away and, and trebling their um, their wages somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think it shows a lot of credit it should be due, whether it is to Michael Nicholson or somebody who had the foresight when we were talking to Jota 12 months ago, Carter Vickers 12 months ago, to say, these guys have got something about them as well. Why don't we look for the option to buy? I think to get Jota for, I think, 6.6 .6 million as a figure, it's criminal. I think that is bargain of the century. And I think Carter Vickers, proven talent, you know, absolute, you know, rock at the back last season, similar figure, six ish million. And interestingly, James, they're both on long term deals. So Jota, twenty three years of age, five year deal. You're going to get the best of him and very probably a few quid, you know, two or three years down the line. Catter Vickers Summer, twenty four years of age, four year deal. And it's a real just positive sign of intent. Yeah, there's there's a lot in there and it's it's that professional approach that Celtic are taking to these negotiations and scouting and, and targeting players. I think Sousa falls into that where Celtic have wanted a, a loan to buy or a buy, and I think it's Man City holds you know his, his registration the somewhere, group, yep. and they want they fancy him back at some point, so they wanted a loan loan with no option, and I think Celtic said that's not in our plan, mm -hmm. and that's why our, our interest is dissipated there. On Carter Vickers, it was so crucial because if you looked at a couple of weeks ago before he signed, you're going to start the the season with Welsh and Julian. I want away Julian and Welsh is not quite there yet. Starfield injured. Starfield injured, you yeah, know, so right. it showed you how important it was to, to get him. Mm -hmm. Jota, I don't think we've seen half of what we're going to see from him this season. <clears throat> he just looks so relaxed, comfy, happy. He knows his future's settled. If he does well, he'll go on to really big things. He's got a Champions League exposure coming up. I think it's going to be a phenomenal season for him. That, that, that for me, is the, the most exciting part of the, the Jota signing is he'll have come in. Now, now, bear in mind, just before I elaborate on that point, it's a point of I've been thinking about to, to emphasise today and how important this pre-season is because Jota, Carter Vickers, Jack Amakis, Hart, Starfield, Kyogo, Hitati, Maeda, O'Reilly, Juranovic, Juranovic, all, I mean, the early season signings literally get thrown in. Mm -hmm. They're all, for the first time, going to have that pre-season together, all of the guys that were already there. you know, And, and even I would throw Forrest into that as well for the point of view of... <coughs> Forrest was really stop start even the start of last season. They never mm. really had a, a run of games because we, we all figured he was going to be a really major player on the ranch. Did feature early doors, then fell away again. Turnbull coming back for injury, getting back. You know, just there's so many signs to me that say everybody's back fit together at the one time. I just think that's so crucial as well for the harmony of the squad and everybody being at the same level in terms of fitness. Because I think you could see in some games, you know, like Sarah Hitati at different times, maybe dropping off. But, but in any case, I just think that's a really important point to add. In terms of Jota, what excites me the most is that form that he showed early in the Europa League when we were probably struggling a wee bit. He just looked a class apart, I thought. Um, just be interesting to see that going into the Champions League stage. I just I just hope he shows, he shows us all just how good he is. Yeah, I, I think there's loads of interesting things about Jota. I, I'm really, really excited. I think it's just such a, a, a big statement and a big signing for us. I was along at the press conference last Friday where the fan media were invited when he you know, signed his new deal. Loads of interesting stuff. We've got it on our YouTube channel if anyone wants to, to catch that in full. A couple of things about it. He himself said it was his first full pre-season in about four or five years. For he whatever reason, himself, yeah. bit disjointed, out on loan, Benfica B team and whatever. So you're now going to get the full benefit of him having all that time in the training field. I asked him what I thought was a, a pretty simple, pretty straightforward question. As it happened, the way it worked with the fan media thing, I was one of the last to ask. And by that point, you're going, somebody's asked that question. <laughs> asked that, and, you, and you're running on empty, asking him his favourite pizza topping and all that stuff. But I asked Jota, just, you know, given the, you know, the the scale of last season, you know, winning the league title back, Ange coming to the club, fans back at Parkhead after a COVID season, you know, lots of big things happened. And I asked him what was his moment of the season. Now, I was expecting something along the lines of, lifting the league trophy in front of a full Celtic park or scoring a goal against Rangers or whatever it might be. He's a smart guy. He's he, he's a deep thinker. And he, he took a few moments to consider it. You know, most footballers, to be honest, he would come back with a, oh, scoring a great goal, whatever. Took a bit of time to think about it. And he said, okay, okay. He said, listen, I've spoken about this before, but the moment for me last season was a game against Real Betis away. 
group stage of the Europa. He says, during that game, something just clicked. He says, myself, my teammates, you know, just felt that there was something to this, i.e. Angie's system. And he said, at that point, they really started to believe that something could happen here. Now, we didn't win that game. I think we lost it 4-3. A you game know. in which Ajeti scored. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. scored the opener. Yeah, and the game went yeah. kind of back and forth, I think. Did, uh, you ran out, you scored the Penenka. Did you score? Penenka was against Leverkusen. Was it? By the by, any... Anyway, he scored game, a, No, he scored a penalty in that game, sorry. Did he? You ran out of the chance. A belter. Right in the side, mate. I hear you. Right, well. But Jota was saying, and the point is that he and his teammates felt that it all just came together in that game. And that's fairly early season, you know, they're, they're a bit of time under Ange. But, you know, it's one thing training under Ange and Ange making all the headlines, we never stop, this is what we do. But Jota says he and the players start to believe. But he also went on to elaborate and say, it's one thing a few guys are, you know, believing in things. He says the whole team bought into it. And he says, it's not enough if eight or nine guys, he says, you need the whole squad. And at that point, we realised we could kick on to something very special. And I think it shows that he's a, a student of the game. You know, he's keen to learn. He's 23, as I mentioned there. And I think he's a guy that, as you mentioned there, Murphy, he's going to go into bigger levels this season. And I think beyond and beyond. And we'll see where it goes. But it's just a really exciting time to have a player like that. Yeah, and it, it's so unlike Celtic to do it. That, that I think <laughs> that's the thing. James has already touched on that. You know, normally we would have seen him after doing the kind of title celebration say, thanks lads, I'm about the Premier League. Catch you later. And that's it. He's another one that gets idolised and talked about and, and watched from afar instead we're going to be what watching Celtic been? Park and, and I would say you mentioned there about the disrupted pre-season of Jota Carter Vickers said the exact same mm -hmm. because he was always going back to pre-season not knowing if he was going to be training with Tottenham getting sent out and loan again um, and I think he he actually said he'd, he'd his mind made up fairly early in the piece I think he got, he got that sorted um, not too long after going out in international duty yeah. he, he'd said that's let's make it happen type thing so yeah, just really, really exciting. Um, uh, for me, the the key thing is just the, the players being together. You know, it looks like everybody's back now, um, and and just getting the work done because it's just it's so important with the season coming up. I think there'll be a couple of additions. I, I really do, but with the season that we've got coming up, playing Champions League football, the 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 depth of the squad's really got to be called upon. Yeah, I think so. Speaking of depth, so obviously two other signings of note. Uh, Benjamin Segrist, free, uh, well, free signing as such, James. He was out of contract at Dundee United. Again, a four-year deal, 30 years of age, but goalie-wise, that's obviously, you know, peak years if you like. So four-year deal for him. I think that's just one that makes sense. So we'll not dwell on that too much. You know, good backup for Hart and potentially someone who really pushed Joe Hart to... He's a keeper I've wanted for years. Mm -hmm. I just think he's a cracking keeper. He's got work to do and he's, you know, ball at feet, but so did Hart. And so does Hart after that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Um, but we'll not spend too much time on Segrist, but another guy who's who's certainly uh, got the fans excited, Alexandro Bernabai, if I've pronounced that right. 21-year-old left back, signed for £3.5 million from Lanus in Argentina. Again, five-year deal, so it's clearly part of the plan. This isn't, you know, just you know random. Most of the guys that we've tied up since Ange came in, long-term deal. Did you catch much of him in the... the so him in the, the Wednesday game. Uh, he just looks... Uh, you need to take the opposition into account here, but he looks so comfy on the ball, so athletic so aware bombing up and down you know left back to left wing he's, he's comfy with all stepping inside he's already bringing that in his play mm -hmm. I think we're going to see something special there yeah, yeah. sorry Muff I was going to say Muff competition for Greg Taylor or a replacement for Greg Taylor yeah hey, back up <laughs> so I, I think um, he, he does look an exciting signing just a very typical Ange player mm -hmm. athletic gets up and down puts in the work and, and, and decent on the ball so you know, not, not, nothing really to complain about and, and I also like the fact he's our player you know we've got him yep. signed long term um, it's just it's just so far removed to what you normally get uh, also note Barky conceded four goals to Queen's Park in this. he didn't quite that's, that's a bit is that no? so is that no? Queen's is that Park no did score four goals against FC Utrecht which is what Barker says he played the first half and conceded one so I'm not a big one for defending Barkas, but he only conceded one on the on the day. If his hands grew back in you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pop a dumb hands. Um, off the park as such, there's been an interesting addition. So Harry Kewell's joined the first team coaching staff. Obviously, there's the Australian link, but Ange says it's it's not about that. It's because he's he's a talented guy and the right man for the job. Kewell himself, he's had managerial spells at teams like Notts County, Oldham, and very recently Barnet. But he's now decided to, I think, in order to further his career, work under somebody like Ange. So that could be exciting. He's generally regarded as Australia's greatest ever footballer and he was a Champions League winner with Liverpool in 2005. Thoughts on that one, Muff? Is he? Aye. What? Winner? Regarded as Australia's football. greatest ever footballer? Mate, Wikipedia doesn't lie. 
Harry Kuhl. Rogic. Who, who do you say is better? Uh, I've Tom Rogic. <laughs> well, um, Champions League winner. I, I said Tim Cahill. No. The Champions, the Champions League, League winner. I don't know if I suppose he'll get you I, that. I should have just, I, I, I should have just put it in air quotes for you. But, yeah. um, it's interesting. Uh, I can't say it's, you know, kind of set my world a light particularly. I, Did I you watch his interview? No. Okay. No. Thanks for the. I really have asked somebody to watch that. On, ba- on the basis that yeah. I, I wasn't actually too keen on him. No, <laughs> really, I. But he was married to. Well, I say it was an Emmerdale, wasn't it? Is he still? Is he still? Married? Is that the criteria? Is he? Or um, going peace between that aye. and your surfing no, match. So I watched his interview. I, I, listen, listen, I like to throw a wee curveball in there. Um, no, no, I didn't. Um, the way that Ange works, I think it's not relevant. I don't mean it like that. It's just Ange is just the figurehead. It's all really about him. If you think, look at you know the guys like Kennedy, Strachan that were absolutely derided in the season under Lennon. Now they're, you know, yeah. functional, functional assistants and first team coaches. So for me, it's just all about coming in, doing what's still. Yeah, James, you watched the interview. I did. Give yeah. us some insight. Apart from he's married to Lassie Femmer, though. I don't know. I don't, know, he's married I don't to. know if that's still the case. Uh, I don't want to put any yeah. slanderous out there. Never we'll, 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 we'll never know. We'll confirm in the show yeah. notes if he still is, guys. Yeah. Um. It just seemed like you said he was, he was looking at. Know, further in his career by taking a step back and learning under, under someone like Ange who's got a really successful system and has done for a number of years and um, there might be an Aussie link in it for him Ange doesn't, doesn't seem to think so the other way around um, he seemed quite nervous actually he seemed quite nervous this has been the, 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 the task you know ahead of him and he's not a nervous guy you know mm-hmm. he's a really confident guy and it, you can actually hear him a lot in the pre-season game last week so he'll not be shy once it comes to football time. Maybe just media stuff. He's thinking this is quite a big mm-hmm. step in my career. Um, he's certainly keen. He's, so he's two-time finalist in and one-time winner. Correct. So you can't have enough of those guys in your dressing room. You know, just to pass on that knowledge to the guys, what, what it's like in these big games with, you know, playing against the best in the world and stuff. So it, it means, it looks like a demotion for McManus, but it isn't. What mm-hmm. they're trying to do is realign the B team to the first team because yeah. it was really disjointed and the, the numbers weren't coming through. So they're now, they've got McManus and O'Day down there doing exactly what Ange and Kennedy and the rest are doing in the first team. So Kuehl is coming in to add a bit more, maybe a bit more creativity, you know, a creative mind mm-hmm. there. And McManus goes and you know, delivers the, the conveyor belt as such. Yeah, and I think it's a good move because I think we've spoken often enough about the the gap, that bridge between the, the B team, the development team, call it what you will, and the first team. It's just not happened in recent times. It brings us nicely, I suppose, to our next example. I'm going to talk about some of the players that have, have left the club, either permanently or on loan. Karamoko Dembele's top of that list. Yeah. Now, for all the talent he had, and we've been hearing about it for seven, eight, nine years, something like that, it just hasn't worked out. Now, there can be a lot of reasons for that, and maybe it was too much too soon for Karamoko making a debut at such a young age, but... A young talent and certainly someone who who have been led to believe is as talented as, as he is or was should be coming through. You know, there, there should be, I think he had 10 appearances in total at Celtic and, you know, he was unlucky with injury and different things. But whether it's Karamoko or, or the various talented guys that seem to come to Celtic and reach a, <clears throat> excuse me, reach a level, reach a, a ceiling of sorts and then filter out to Ross Counties and League One and different things. There's too many guys not coming through and hopefully by this move, Muff, you'll start to see some of the genuine talent, you know, make a play for the first team. Well, the, the rule of thumb goes that you should be adding a couple of B-team players to the squad every year, really, mm. that, that are going to play a, a part of some yep. description in the season ahead. We, we don't really seem to have that with a lot of regularity, albeit when you look at the squad, there are a few academy graduates in there and there have been a few that have moved on to Want to better things, but the the for me the point is it, it's, it's a consistency, and it's also to be able to attract the best young talent. You need to show that that pathway exists, rather than for it to seem like it's mission impossible. So the, the easier we can make that. I, I mean, to use Dembele as a specific example, he showed flashes, but that's all. Um, I think he just got injured at the wrong time under Ange. I, I think that was I think, a sliding door. I, th- I think you know. I think he would have um, he would have probably featured a hell of a lot more yeah, early that, season. It was just a, a ridiculous challenge. Oh, for it was terrible, season, you terrible know? counter attack. Yeah. You know, so who knows? But I, I I think that that was just and by that time you've seen Jota on loan. He's looking like a superstar. Um, you've you've got James Forrest coming back into contention. Mikey Johnson's ahead of him as well. So he was probably mm. just thinking my, my future lies elsewhere. Even when he did get back fit, so. Um, 
Ah, it, it would be interesting to see. I mean, the, the, probably the one that there's most buzz about the now. I, I would say in an attacking sense, Rocco Vata. He, yeah. he, he he's somebody that's, that's definitely showing, well. definitely showing. You know, he's doing it at international level, um, youth international level. But he's, he still seems to be, you know, assisting and scoring goals fairly regularly. So mm-hmm. it will just be interesting to see how he develops and if this pathway can lead to him maybe featuring for the first team in the near future. Yeah, and I think as you say. It'll be, Time will tell if this season, you know, one or two start to pull through because for, for too long, uh, unfortunately, the academy I've, I've referenced, you know, the James Forrest and the, the Kieran Tierneys and the, the Callum McGregors, all very successful players and great examples, but they are now years past examples. You know, mm-hmm. th- those guys are into their, you know, certainly mid and, and you know, beyond mid 20s. So we need more. We need a 19 year old, a 20 year old to, to pull through. The, the interesting, just on, mostly related to that point, the interesting player for me and you'll like this one Tino the interesting player for me this season is Mikey Johnson because I would have thought he'd have probably been at least put out on loan doesn't seem to be any chat that in fact the focus actually seems to be how he's managed to get through a pre-season injury free first mm-hmm. time in a long time he's had that kind of sustained run touch with that that continues it seems to be he's, he's he's in the manager's plan so you know if it, Mikey Johnson hopefully filled with a wee bit of confidence that'll be another excellent addition to the squad I'm delighted to hear that, Miff. You know, I'm, uh, and we'll cover Mikey Johnson maybe in the weeks to come because what we're going to do, not this week, um, but in the next couple of weeks, we'll look at our kind of ahead of the season, our big predictions, you know, who's going to be the surprise package, top scorer, blah, blah, blah. Mikey will definitely feature on my list somewhere. I'll just need to make up a criteria for him, but no, that's no, fine. No, no, no. Um, we'll look at the, um, as you mentioned, my various guys going out on loan and Mikey Johnson isn't one of them, but there are a number of players who who have left. So Barkas is on loan to FC Utrecht, we mentioned. It's, I don't think it's with a view to a permanent deal. I don't know if it's just a straightforward loan. I'd like to think that we could offload him permanently, but I think his wages are an issue. But by the by, uh, Sorrow, just in the last couple of days, he's gone to Aruca in Portugal. Liam Scales has gone to Aberdeen. Adam Montgomery to St. Johnson. And as we know, and as Miff mentioned, Tom Rodgers and Neil Beaton are already away. So Dembele's obviously a disappointment. We've covered that. But James, the other guys I've mentioned there, any surprises, any disappointments that some of these guys are moving on or is it just the right time? There'll never be surprises really in, in Angie's squad. If you're showing it, you'll be staying. And if you're not, you'll be going either permanently on loan as part of a, a development. So Scales is someone I would hope would go and, and learn a bit and you know toughen up a wee bit and, and stuff like that. The rest, I can't think of anyone else really that I'm disappointed. You may be looking at guys who haven't gone out yet. You know, you'd, you'd agree to, you know, a, plenty of enthusiasm, big athlete, but he tackles guys like he's trying to climb them. You know, he's just like a clumsy kind of thing. Um, and that's not really changed. So I, I don't even know where he, where he goes. What, yeah. what, um, he's a bit raw, isn't he? Aye, but it's getting beyond <laughs> that now. It's just he's... <laughs> I, I caught you off guard there, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I was expecting that. That's great. Very descriptive, James. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That kind of like, he's just you know, all arms and legs yeah. kind of thing. Clambering all so, over. And, you know, it seems like he's got a great attitude and stuff like that, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he he ends up on a loan of some sort. Um, and there's probably others to, you know, um, Bolly's still in there somewhere. Bolly and Bolly's in uh, there. <sighs> Miff, what are you saying? Are you, are you composed? Oh, man. I, 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 I can just see that. <laughs> it, but did raw pace, that, 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 that pace that is just frightening, yep. you know, and, and if it can be utilised and harnessed. I've seen someone on Twitter saying that he's a very reactive player. He, mm. he doesn't anticipate situations happening. And again, that's probably as a result of the fact he is so fast. His pace can at other up. levels would have got him out. Yeah. Whereas when you're playing at the levels in the way that Andrew wants you to play, being reactive, as, as, it's yeah. proactive football that, that we tend to play. Um, and I think that's where he gets left behind slightly. I, 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 See, again, you go to Twitter, Twitter's the only real social media I use, and you go in there and you see pe- people are writing them off already. I, I'm, I'm not quite buying into that. I think there, there's definitely something there to work with. Um, I, I just think he, he, he is raw. He's still young. He's had a loan last season. Um, but he, obviously, through necessity, he seems to have featured fairly heavily at the start of this season. But I, I, my, in my opinion, there's, there's something there to work with. That's, that's what I would say. There might be, and obviously uh, Ralston, I think a niggling injury, nothing major. He missed the game at the weekend in Juranovic. Not sure why he's not around just now. Cover him in a wee second. But he's injured. Is he? Yeah. Uh, he's done yep. For a length of time or? It was tail end of the season stuff, wasn't it? Still, Still from that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so Uruguay's in through necessity as much as anything. But we'll see You know what Angie's plans are for him. 
There's a couple of other young guys on the on the fringe of things. I like the look of Boson Lawal. Yeah, but I think time. I think he also has has some stuff to tie up in his game. I caught bits of Rapid Vienna game, the Rapid Vienna game, and he some good, some bad. You know, mm. definitely that. But he's also just you know making his way into the, the senior game. So hopefully he can kick on. James, you mentioned guys like Ball and Goalie and. We've got to be hopeful that guys like him and, and Albion and Ayeti have moved on this window, haven't they? Just for their own careers, you know. It's a funny one. They're maybe on decent dough and they're not getting offered elsewhere. So what do you do, you know? But from a football perspective, they, they will. Footballers want to play football, typically. So Some of them. Uh, well, most of them anyway. Um, and if they can both go on to whatever kind of move that is, whatever the numbers are at Celtic, there's no point in burning it every week. You know, if it's a cut the deal and just put it, write it down to... to Lennon, Lowell time and just ban it as, as, as dead money and move on because it's not good for, for you know having guys around the squad that aren't ever going to be you know part of a match day uh, a match day of first 11 or first 15 whatever I, I completely agree I mean ball and goalie but the fact that he's, has he featured at all I don't, I don't think, even think he's training think with he's, the team at the moment no, no. Um, you know at least with Jay's party he's in there Um you just worry that the guys on big money then become a disruptive influence. Um, that's my kind of worry around Julian, the fact that he's moved, fell through, he's come back. He's, you know, don't mean to be stereotypical, but French people, he's a bit huffy. I don't think him don't. him, him being around the squad and not playing would be a good thing. It's funny, I watched a wee bit of, um, last week and I caught, caught his mistakes at the weekend uh, against Rapid and stuff, you know, just out of position stuff. And I feel for him because he's playing without confidence as a guy who plays his best when he's confident he's maybe feeling a bit more scrutiny than others because he's, he's had that move that fell through but he's he's let his, his guy go on Saturday there and he's still going whose fault can, who can I blame that for and it's like it's you you know it's a strange headspace for a footballer to win though because he's clearly got one foot out the door he knows it his teammates know it the fans know it yet he's having to try and, I know. and perform and you know it's, it's tricky but I actually looked up it was called being professional mm -hmm. oh, right. I've never heard of that um, but yeah, it's strange because he's he's clearly <laughs> he's clearly working his ticket. He clearly wants to make the move. And he's obviously okayed that and says you can, but he's not quite got the deal. So the, the talk was it was personal terms that um did for his move there. Yep. So he passed which, the medical. Which is but that that in itself is interesting, surely if you want to go and play football. I'm not saying you take a massive wage cut, but I, I find it odd that in a loan move He probably thinks the other way. In a in a loan move that the personal terms would be an issue that's, that's quite odd it's so. tricky because you would usually still get 100% of your salary but the loan club would pay some and Celtic would pay some maybe wanted a guaranteed buy option yeah. or something like that you know it's hard to tell a lot of paper talk but I think we'll see him move on before the end of the window whether on loan or permanent the other guy you'd mentioned him there's been a bit of speculation about him I've got a suspicion that Juranovic may move on so they are yeah. I don't know what it is I don't know if it's just you know, Ange wasn't dismissive of it when it came up last week I think there's a, you know, he's had an interesting career so far. He's now moving into that age. Is he maybe 26-ish, 27? That age for him. The next move's the real big move. The last big move, if you like. He only stayed one year at Legia Warsaw when he signed for them and then came to Celtic. So he was clearly quite ambitious to use them for one year. I'm saying use them, right? Everybody wins. He goes and Just plays football. well. And that's fine. And he moves on. He's now had a very good season at Celtic, albeit missed quite a lot through injury. And I just have a wee feeling that he's he's an ambitious guy and that's good for him he may be tempted by a big money move, maybe to somewhere like Spain or, or further into Europe. Do you share those concerns, Muff? Yes. Um, I think that the biggest problem I had when I heard the rumour was that it just made sense. Mm. You know, in terms of our business model as a club and the move, the proposed move to, you know, a top three club in, in Spain, you're like, well, that was the whole point of the move for him and it was the whole point of the move for us that you'd be trebling or whatever your, your money quadruple on it whatever um, but then it just goes back to that fact you know I support Celtic I want Celtic to be the best team and I just don't want him to go because he's a class act he yeah. is an absolute class act yeah I'm a big fan um, but it, it's just one of those moves that when I heard that I just went because oh, it did kind of make a bit of sense the only thing that I was thinking um, was around the fact it's World Cup year a bit strange that it's in the winter he knows that if he stays at Celtic, he's probably got to play most yeah. weeks. Um, he's got to be playing the Champions League regularly. But with Celtic, he probably would be doing that with Atletico anyway. But it's just one of those ones. I, I, I'd say 60-40 that I think he'll go. But right. I, I would be delighted. 
sure. delighted if he stayed. Yeah. yeah. And again, in similar fashion to the, the Jota deal and the Carter Vickers deal, this is the club St. Andrew will back you. And obviously, you know, sometimes you can only go so far with a player, but when you're getting guys on four and five year deals, you hold all the cards. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we're going to last 12 months and, you know, you, you're, you're sticking or twisting. You know, you can say to your Anna, but it's like, and it's not, he's not unhappy here. You know, he enjoys his football. He seems to go on well with his teammates. He likes the city. So it's not like you've got a guy absolutely spoiling yeah. for a move. Just on that point, though, I think if there's a conversation, <coughs> this is how it strikes me anyway, the, the impression I get of Ange. We sign these guys and, you know, we put them on five year contracts. That's great. If you walk into a room and Ange gets even the slightest feeling that your head's you're away, yep. that'll be you. Yeah, that's I, that's the feeling I get. It's like you're either in or you're out. Aye, and that's where Julian's, you know, a similar example to that. He's been given the, the grace to go and speak to somebody. He's came back. Yep, he can play his part through pre-season, but long-term future, don't see it. Juranovic's future will depend on what he's indicated to, to Ange, I would assume. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if he's genuinely been injured, fine. But I don't know, there's just something about it that I think I think there's, a bit, there's a, something in it. I do have a wee feeling, but a lot of what you said there makes sense in terms of the World Cup year. You know, he's obviously mm-hmm. a, a, an ever-present for Croatia. You do not want to risk that. Yeah, if Atletico Madrid play in a better league than, than what Celtic do, but you could go there and find yourself kicking your heels for a few months till you make your way into the team. By that point, maybe someone else is starting a right back for your country. Yeah. So nobody want, you know, some players will never play a World Cup, some will only play one. You do not want to risk missing out on that. And the Champions League, you know, it's a, it's a huge carrot for him. So hopefully he'll stay on, but we'll, we'll watch that space very closely. What, what's the number for your Anovich if he goes? The, without, the general getting, number getting thrown around is 15. Is that enough for it? I don't know. I suppose it's because, you know, age, is, age, age and he's a fullback. He's not a forward, he's not a 10. They maybe, they maybe go for less money you see, generally. Do you see the nonsense in England still, guys? You've never heard of going for yeah. 20 million? I, that's, I mean, for me, it would be no less than 20. And you just make that clear to the player. That's what we think you're worth. You can always just turn around and say, yep, you can go after somebody the number that I, figure. Yeah. And it's up to you and it's up to your, your buying club. I just, I just think he's he's a classy player. Yeah, really really classy is. player. Um, I, 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 I really don't want him to go, but I think he might. You know, you'd have to think that certainly have got a bit of prep up their sleeve that if he does go then you know he, he's going to be the replacement because no harm we've just fixed the left back problem and to give ourselves a right back problem would be a couple of digs lads that's a couple of digs I'm trying to let them just go but first. that would be like old Celtic you know what I mean we're trying this you know organised kind of thing we don't want to get into a season where we've just flipped the problem you know in terms of fullbacks you heard it here first Kyle McGregor starting right back first <laughs> Champions League game <laughs> I thought it was going to be beat on yeah <laughs> you've uh, you've obviously now got the fact that uh, John Joe Kenny's away. He's not available. He's signed elsewhere, so you couldn't get him back <laughs> John in. Joe uh, don't man. Adam don't. Matthews is away to join Lenny in Cyprus, don't. so uh, right back could be a problem. Alone, we didn't. Oh, I don't think we covered uh, Adam Montgomery going to St John's. I oh, mentioned yeah. that. If I don't miss a thing, did you? Uh, but I did mention he's going to St Johnson. The the deal at the moment it might change. The deal is that he's only there till Christmas or, or New Year, so maybe the club are saying, "Yep, take him for a few months." And we'll review that because they may want him back for the run. And he featured a lot last year, more out of necessity, but a couple I, of big moments. I think the club sees something in him and I think you know, he could develop as well. I think there's a player in there, definitely. Yeah. Let's move on. So we've touched on some of the preseason friendly. So Celtic lined up for their first friendly last week against Weiner Victoria. Vina. Going for that. Vina. I went Vina. You say potato. Uh, and the difference between the starting lineup for that one and Angie's very first friend leg in Sheffield Wednesday back in the 7th of July last year is remarkable. Have you seen the lineup for the Wednesday game? Oh, I did so. From last year. I'll read it out for those who missed it. Ingles, mm-hmm. Barkas, Adam Montgomery that you mentioned, Dane Murray, Stephen Welsh, Tony Ralston, Sorrow, Kerr McEnroy, who I think has also now left the club, uh, Ewan Henderson, Owen Moffat, and Captain for the day. I'll be in a I'll be in a yeah. So. Just very, sorry, Liam Shaw was in there as well. Very interesting, you know, there's some real, I was going to say non-entities, that's a bit harsh, but some sketchy names in there. Then you <laughs> fast forward to, to the lineup for the Victoria game. Joe Hart and goals, England, you know, 75 caps, etc. Urugidi we've covered, Chris Julian, Alessandro Bernabai, Lawal that we've covered, James McCarthy, Adeguchi, Rio Hatati, James Forrest, Johnny Kenny, Mikey Johnson. Far more familiar names, and, and obviously that lineup changed much further again for the Rapid Vienna game. But it just shows you the stark contrast, James, and and the difference that, you know, for Ange's working situation now, you know, the stress he must have been under in terms of just trying to cobble a team together whilst also managing a team, coaching a team and and and, and all the the chores that were around. It's it's incredible the difference, isn't it? Yeah, and, and went on and, you know, won a double with it. You know, just 
we're only now starting to look back on last season as last season. And it's just phenomenal, the turnaround from where we were to where we got to. Um, and this season for not just Ange, but the whole of the management team to be able to look and plan and, you know, with, with cool heads rather than just panicking. I, I, I wonder, could you do that again? You know, I did Did we get a couple of breaks in Juranovic and Hatati and, and these kind of things that they just, those, those signings kind of worked out. They could have gone the other way. As in, cause you wouldn't you wouldn't choose to get into that kind of situation. Mm. So, but it's it's you know, signs that you know, galvanise them all. You wonder how much was was luck and how much was design. And I'd like to think it's the latter because we can you clearly know. see that Andrew's got an eye for a player. But there's loads of signing that ma- signings that make sense historically for for all sorts of clubs, for Celtics and Man United and whoever that just don't work out yeah. for whatever reason. Shane Duffy, Shane Duffy, yeah. aye. Who, Duffy. who was Diego Forlan at Man United? What a player. Mm. Terrible at Man United, for example. Um, and sometimes it just that doesn't play out. But there's there's a couple of things that play. Obviously, Ange and his backroom team, whoever he's working with, scouts wise, to identify these players. That's one thing, identifying the right players for the way he plays. The other thing is integrating them. Mm. You know, in between Ange and Callum McGregor and, and the other existing players from last year. That has you know been a seamless process. Guys have, you know, they've come and been a part of something. But you can also see, and social media gives you an insight into this, that they enjoy being here. You know, you see them out for dinner with each other and <coughs> socialising and, and just, you know, living a, you know, what looks like an, an enjoyable life here in Glasgow. Yeah. And it all comes together to give the player the best possible chance of success when they're here. And that is the thing when you've, you've got so many different elements that can go wrong. When you've got culture versus strategy and culture beats strategy every time. If players are coming into a good culture then it's much easier to integrate because they get the feeling they want to be there and then their abilities are allowed to be showcased. So I think that's the biggest thing that Angie's has created is this, this winning culture, this happy culture, cohesive culture at Celtic. Yeah. I was just, going to say, Miff, well, on you go. No, just the one player you mentioned there um, started in the game, Eric Gucci. What's your thoughts on her? I know we've not had much to go on. Do you think you think the fact that Beaton and Rogic have been allowed to go it's going to sig- signify him playing a major role this season? He'll definitely get more of a chance to show what he's worth but I think it's now it's all on him. So Celtic have I think maybe four four, four games left pre-season wise he'll get a decent game time in those games. James McCarthy falls in the same bracket. I think exactly. Yeah, They'll yeah, need to yeah. prove. I'm, I've said it before I'll say it again I'm desperate for James McCarthy to prove himself because I think there's a real player in there. He also didn't get a pre-season last year. Right. He, he was training on his own. He was mm-hmm. out of you know, no club out of contract and all of the players will benefit from the full pre-season, no qualifiers to worry about. And I really hope that James McCarthy can kick on, but Adaguchi, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think there's something there, whether it's good enough for us to, you know, to progress with him remains to be seen. I think they'll all be there. I, I think McCarthy will play a part. I think Adaguchi will play a part. I think we need to sign someone else that will play a part. And you're going to need that level of, you know, those kind of numbers for you in midfield because we see how intense it is. Even with a full pre-season, it's going to be intense football. This run up to the World Cup is going to be crazy because it's just non-stop, yeah. you know. Games every second yeah. day, Miff. Yeah. Just it reminds me, post-January, jeez. <laughs> that was that was intense, yeah. especially when we were gathering Getting that momentum, yeah. man. It was heart attack material. <laughs> yeah. So we've covered a lot of the you know, the existing team, the guys that are there and the guys that we're hoping will kick on again for next season. But you mentioned there, James, the deep line midfield position. I was going to ask where you think the gaps are. And for me, it's, it's definitely there. A number six... You know, it's what's been touted. Sousa, 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 Sousa. yeah. Sousa. Uh, he's been touted and whether he, you know, comes in or not remains to be seen. It seems no, he's playing he's in that game. He has signed yeah. for them. Yeah. Breaking news, guys, Sousa's not coming in. He's, uh, he's got <laughs> Espanol. But it's clear, it looks clear that Angie's looking for somebody for that position and whether he's, you know, he thinks that Iriguchi and McCarthy maybe aren't quite the guys or if he wants just someone else to compete with McGregor or to allow McGregor to move forward. I'm not entirely sure, but for me, that's the big gap where is the gaps for you, Muff? There and centre half and pro last striker. Mm. Would you be going with Carter Vickers and Starfield as your first pairing or first choice pairing, or do you feel that someone maybe comes in alongside I, I, Carter? I think Vickers? you have to on the basis of how good the defensive record was last year. I think what could be argued is uh, uh, is that pairing good enough for the Champions League? You know. You need to allow the fact that they've had that season together and they, they could improve on again. There's quite a lot of good unit there between them and, and Hart. Um, so I, I would say that somebody coming in would maybe not be back up, but I think it would be harsh on either Vickers or, or Starfield to be dropped, especially the, way they ended, especially the way they ended the season. I thought yeah. Starfield in particular had a real um, 
a really, really consistent run. And that was with me being a fairly harsh critic of his in the, the yeah. first part of the season. But then you need to remember all the factors that contributed to that. I think just, you know, like any football at any level though, competition is good for you. Mm -hmm. It's healthy. And I think, I don't think Stephen Welsh is pushing them. You know, I don't, no. I don't think Ange sees him as the, the man. It's clear, even though we debated it at length last season, that Julian's not rated either, particularly highly by Ange. So they're not being pushed. And I think, you know, more often than not, Catavacers and Starfelt know that as long as they turn up and train, they'll play the games on a Saturday. So you need someone to come in, A, to push them, and B, to potentially, you know, come in and out for them, give them a bit of rest, because yep. it will be a relentless programme right up until mid-November, I think it is, before the World Cup, and then beyond. It's going to be a real uh, condensed season, if that's mm -hmm. the right term for it. So it will be tough, and I think, yeah, we need cover there. So I'm saying a six, my if you're saying a set and a half, and a striker, do you think a front man is needed as well, James? I think you're looking for a kind of versatile striker winger and yes. might bring us to the Larson uh, chat, who is yes. very much that kind of he plays a lot of times in the wing, can play through the front. Um what's what's the is that on your agenda or do you want to just throw I've, it in? I've scribbled it, it wasn't on the agenda, yeah. but I thought it was worth just having a quick chat on it because chatting it with a couple of mates in the group chat and is that a distraction to the, the Ange project? That's the thing. He's a talented... If his name wasn't Larson, I might be more inclined. Talented guy, proven himself in Europe, young, sell-on value, all these things. But does it come with too much of a burden being who he is or his son? I think it's harder for him than it is for us. I think it's a free shot for us because, like he says, you, there's, there's no signing fee, so it's free transfer. He does, he does fit for what we're looking for. He's got a track record. It, it could work, not work, without any great risk to us. For him coming in with the pressure of his dad's name... It might derail his career a wee bit. If it doesn't quite work out, you know, he's taking a move that didn't work out at a big club that he was expected at. Um, personally, I've, I've kind of swithered on it and I'd probably go for it. I wonder if his dad's like that. Don't you dare go in there <laughs> and ruin my legacy. <laughs> what do you think, man? Well, there, there is that, but I don't I don't think anything could ruin Henry Arsenal's yeah. legacy. It, really, it's that strong. Um, Kidding on, mate. Calm down. I would serious, say... Man. I'm serious, I think. Very serious. Hey, first episode back. It's all business. Lad. It's all business. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's a, a fairly tenuous link. I, I'm, I'm with you. Has Ange got to bring someone in for those reasons? I thought McCarthy was a stretch in, mm. in being brought in um, just because he'd been linked with for 10 years old. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think... It, to me, it just doesn't seem to fit with what we are. I... I I don't, I, nah, I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. I'd be happy enough with it, you know, because he's, he's a good player, like you said, he's a good player, and he's probably that sort of hybrid of a striker coming yeah. off the wing, yeah. whatever, that, that it would it would add to the squad. Um, but it would just be horrible if he came in and, and, it, and it didn't work out for any reason, yeah. just for, for all the reasons you've said. So nah, I, I can't see it, um, but I, I wouldn't be against that. Yeah. And he is an established part of the Sweden national team, isn't he? Is he established? He's certainly, you know, capped Wait, a number of times. 22, 23? I think he's 24, 25. Right. Again, decent, decent age. It's an interesting one. Um, I don't think it'll happen, but we'll keep an eye on it. Two other ones, uh, same, same, but different as such. The, the I don't think it'll happen, but have been linked. One of them, I think, is just uh, something that was, that was put on a blog today, and I'm not quite buying into it. Moussa Dembele, available for 10 million. <laughs> that seems to be the chat. I think Southampton are in for him. He's in the last year of his deal at Lyon. We know all about him. I think he was a phenomenal oh. striker for Celtic. I think the big stumbling block would be, I think he's on 50 odd grand, so you can maybe put the brakes on it right away. But any thoughts on that? Would you Loved him. entertain it? Loved him. Um, no, he, 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 I don't think, you know, the the stage of his career we got him at, I don't know if Ange signs him. I just don't know if he's if he fits what Ange's looking for. Still only 25 years of age. I know. Um, I'm amazed he didn't, you know, because there was a couple of times he could have kicked on for bigger moves. Um, he's still a great player. The way he does it, it kills it stone dead. But you know, he missed a lot of games for Celtic when he was when he was bang on fire. You know, he had um, some niggles. Yeah, and he loves Celtic and all that kind of stuff. But does nah, he? Ah, he does. He loves it. He, he likes, loves it loves it up, he likes to wind up on Twitter. Aye. But um, nah, not not for me. You can give us your thoughts on that one, Muff, as well as. A guy you mentioned, Jason Denier. I think he's out of contract, and somebody's saying, "Why not? You know, why would he not move fancy another turn?" But again, <laughs> wages make him into it. Both, yeah. both yeses for me. Aye, right. no <laughs> problem. They say never go back. Off, Musa, back you come, son. <laughs> oh man, every day of the week, yeah. every day of the week, what a player. Yeah, I love them. I mean, Celtic will always be linked with names, and sometimes whether it's kind of 
some of our own bloggers or, or, or various sites, a lot of names get thrown in the mix and you wonder just how much... The, the only issue with it for me would be that it could potentially halt Jacques Marcus's pro progress and, and progression. You know, you can see he's hungry and want to move on to that next level, whereas Mrs. is kind of, you know, Leon, Atletico Madrid, he's been in the Champions League, he's played in the semi-finals and stuff like that. He's, he's reached a, a fairly good level. Mm -hmm. um, probably a wee bit of concern that he's not kicked on to even mm -hmm. higher than that because I think he has the ability to, so it would suggest, I know he did follow up with the manager at Leon. that was the whole reason he moved Atletico, to okay. Atletico. Um, I don't know, there's obviously maybe just a wee something there, maybe coming back to a club like Celtic where he's, he's loved and would get that adoration and be the main man. But would he be the main man? That's that's the thing because in Kyogo we've got someone who I think is just unreal. He's out of this world, Kyogo. Um, Dembele or nobody replace, replaces yeah. him for me. That finish. Is, is, have you seen the finishing? Aye. Saturday. Yeah, just, oh, just what he does. Cool. Oh. Is the profile of that winger striker or just straight striker more of a 20, 21 year old with a bit to prove, you know, a bit of development to go? Aye. You know, so he could come in and do a job straight away but it could be coached into being you know, challenging Kyogo and Giacomacus rather than being an established number nine like Dembele. Yeah. You know? We'll watch this space, but loads of names similar will get thrown at us over the next couple of weeks and we'll see if Ange takes any of them seriously. Um, just going back to the pre-season, so obviously we mentioned we beat Viner Victoria 7-0. Seems like a, a run in the park. I don't know if it's Viner Victoria Juniors that we play. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was that. Right. I literally was so, uh, Johnny Kenny getting a couple of goals. We'll maybe cover him in another episode but Big Julian taking his hat trick off oh, <laughs> murder man got to be ruthless the guy's looking for a move oh. uh, Rio Hattati scoring Mikey Johnson uh, James Forrest and Rocco Vata very tidy finish and, mm. and really pleased for him did you see the keeper but the keeper <laughs> second post there, oh <laughs> man put it in there mate <laughs> so not a huge test by any stretch Rapid Vienna uh, you know different kettle of fish on Saturday uh, three each game disappointing to lose the goal at the last the last minute but you know not a big concern Matt O'Reilly, decent goal. And in fact, all three goals, Turnbull and Kyogo, you know, assisting each other for the goals there. And that was encouraging. A couple of cheap goals to concede though, and, and that'll be a worry, but maybe less so just given that it's only the second game and it's very much a bit part. They're, team. they're starting the season next week, I think, as well. So they're a bit further on. Up to speed. So the four remaining games uh, on Wednesday, we play Ostrava from the Czech Republic. I think Celtic are moving their camp from Austria to the Czech Republic, I believe. So we play Ostrava on Wednesday. Then back to Celtic Park for the first game of the season uh, against Blackburn Rovers. Then it's the Arthur Boric extravaganza. So <laughs> out to Ligia Warsaw on Wednesday, 20th of July. And then finally, Saturday, 23rd of July, Celtic v Norwich. Hard to tell, Muff, you know, certainly in the first couple of games, what the, the team's going to shape up like. And, you know, obviously, you know, you'll always be interested who scored, how did we play, what's the highlights. But it should be more telling in the next few games, shouldn't it, as to how we're going to shape up. Absolutely, and I think the, the key thing is just getting minutes into the legs. It's a it's a cliche for this time of the season, but the team are back together as a, a squad, a very big squad. There probably will be a few exit um, by the time some of those friendlies are played. But but the key thing is wh whether those guys are moving or not is for them to be professional enough to treat the preseason as it is to get themselves fit. If they are in the shop window, fine. Um, but it just brings the whole squad along at the same at the same time and has them at the start of the season ready to go unlike last season when like you've described it was it really was patchwork stuff um, mm. I think you come back to the Mitchelland qualifier Dame Murray started at centre I think oh, you're right did yeah. he yeah. you know so you, it was Murray and Welsh I think started it was beat on was around somewhere because he sent off beat on he sent off as yeah. well yeah, Abada's yeah. first game I've not even mentioned Abada either Abada's yeah. come um, so yeah for me, it's just it's just critical that we, we get minutes into the legs and see that back occasion because the two teams in each half, you know, we're, we're strong enough teams mm -hmm. on, on Saturday. So it's just going to be interesting to see what that first lineup is come the Aberdeen game. Yeah, definitely. James, who are you keen to see more of in the upcoming game? So for me, it's it's always Kyogo and Jota. They're yeah. the absolute shining lights and I think most fans are excited to see them at any given occasion. I'm really excited about Rio Hattati. You know, what a, a, a fully rested and, and recuperated Rio Hattati will bring. And David Turnbull, you mentioned him. With, I'm really keen to see how he kicks on. What about yourself? Hattati's going to blow your socks off this season. He's he's just shown he's a classy footballer. I think he's had time to prep, get fitter, you know, get rid of the kind of lethargy he had, you know, just for playing too much and you know, constantly. He's a, alongside Jot, he's the two that I'm really looking forward to seeing this season. Turnbull's still a debate for me. 
I know he is. Um, and I think he's a, a massive talent. I just think he's a bit square peg round hole. I can't see where he really fits the system and how do we best get, you know, how do we get the most out of his talents? Um, is there a, a West Ham bid? All that, that, that kind of chat's been going on for him. Let, let's get most of the minutes to him and see what he can do in an Ange team. That's probably, you don't want to lose talent like Turnbull, but there's no point if, if he doesn't fit the system. Yeah, and I suppose that's what these games are for. You know, he was unlucky in the second half of last season not to play too much football after his he's fairly notable injury. Um, I know you're fairly keen on him, you know, but whether it's Turnbull or anyone else, who are you keen to see? I think whether I'm keen on him or not, the fact that Ange relied so heavily on him um, at the start of the season, you could argue that was through necessity. Yeah. But um, out of all the players, he was the one that played. Um, so I, I think with Turnbull, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think, I think he's got a part to play. Um, can you see the I take, I, take, no, I, take, I take your point about him not he's not very athletic it's the energy Turnbull. isn't he he's, uh, not, he's not that dynamic he's not very very athletic so I can take that point but neither was Rogic and he did did fit in well I, I think Big that, physical though Rogic I, I think with, with Turnbull I think that will be the, the type of role you know when you talk about where he would fit in I think that that kind of 10 role rather than sitting alongside McGregor I think mm -hmm. it would be Turnbull pushed on with McGregor and someone else sitting on McGregor being genuine box to box and McCarthy or the Gucci playing the, the, the deep line role. Um, but the, to go back to the point of Turnbull, I think he's got a future, yes. Um, who I'm excited to see at the Gucci because just I don't think there's a lot of evidence to go on. Um, given that Maeda, Hattati, Kyogo have done so well, it would be nice for him to come in and contribute to a similar level. I agree on Hattati. Um, I think he just looks an excellent footballer and Joel and Kilgore obvious ones, but but Jack and Marcus again, I, th I think we've just got ourselves one of those big mm -hmm. big goal scorers yeah. that just you just love seeing, you know, toe bash in for six yards. <laughs> love it. Love it. I think what that, that shows as well is that you've got a number of key players and figures throughout the team. You know, and I suppose the, the the litmus test would be ask any wee guy just now who's your hero. And it's not just oh, whoever the number nine is at any given time. Could be Kyogo, could be Jack and Marcus, could be Jota, could be Hatai. Taylor. Yeah. But you know, I mean, there, there, Joe, so Joe Hart figures. as well. Joe, Joe Hart's caught a lot of the kids' imagination because yeah. he's that sort of figurehead type, yeah. you know, elder statesman. He just gets it. Yeah. yeah. But I know what you mean. There's, there's that spread of, you know, not, not all talisman, but, you know, big figures, big, big figures players. and influential in the yeah. team. And I think Ange is quoted as well as saying that he believes we need a couple more in. And if Ange is saying we need more in, we'll yeah. get more in. Yeah. That yep. means there's going to be a couple Simple more guys who will come and play their part. Yep. So there'll be more heroes to look forward to, Miff. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, there's a couple of key dates as well, you know, just for your Celtic diary. So if you mentioned the opening league fixture of the season, that's Aberdeen, Sunday 31st of July, 4.30 kickoff. I don't oh, know, one. must be TV or something. Uh, I don't know if we've ever kicked off at half four, but we will do now. Uh, Thursday 25th of August, UEFA Champions League group draw taking place in Istanbul. So that'll be interesting to find out. Celtic are obviously in pop four, I think. Yeah, we are. So you could have some real... Oh, it's going to be a bad storm, right? Type, yeah. type stuff. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> And match day one of the Champions League itself, that's either Tuesday 6th or Wednesday 7th of September. Um, just another date of note, I suppose, we, we touched on it in the conversation, is the World Cup, of course, so taking place in Qatar between the 21st of November and the 18th of December. So you're going to have a real run of fixtures from 31st of July right up to, I think it's the 12th of November is the last fixture, and there's a five, six-week break, and then you're back into it. So it's going to be relentless and, and lots to look forward to. Matthew, you mentioned the Aberdeen game. We've got Aberdeen, Ross County and Kilmarnock, so... It's an interesting start, but you've got to be hopeful, you know, of getting some some decent points on the board there, haven't we? Listen, it doesn't really matter who we're playing. I think it's about us. It's about the kind of standards that we're going to set, how we go about it, play with the same energy, enthusiasm as we did last season, hopefully even more um, cohesive than, than last season. It, it's going to bode well, but it's all right, I was sitting talking about it. We need to see it in action on the park and we're actually getting closer to that, so... Quicker yeah. it comes about. Definitely. James, in terms of the Champions League, what's what's acceptable? What's your hopes for that? <sighs> Given that we're going to probably have a, a group of death, whether we believe it or not, it's hard to pick one that isn't. You know, it's just where you are. Um, you're just you're, you're just getting back into this uh, level of football. So, um, get, I suppose the way Ange is, it's always improving. So we're going to move from being a pot four team to being a pot three team. That means you need to finish third. So worst case is get yourself third and, and drop into Europa, push for a second place. That's really what you're after, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't like being 
a real, <laughs> a real, a real man with these things, Miff. I think that's, that's a, real. a pragmatic approach. I think if we're all being realistic, you would take a third place finish and continue your European journey. And you won't think like that. And he won't have the players thinking like that. It's just, it's just not how he operates. No, the, the, and again, we know, we know how we're going to play. Yeah. And if we get a group of death, it could be right here. So I saw a headline today. I didn't even click it to, to read it. It said, will Ange adopt a more defensive uh, approach to Europe? And it's just like, no, no, no it's not. Still not one time. Aye. Yeah. Um, Oofed. my World Cup in Qatar, are you going? No, didn't no. get tickets. <laughs> James, missed oh, out in the ballot. Bad stuff in there. Yeah, some, some debatable stuff. Um, moving away from that, and as we started up things up, just a couple of other points of note. So Celtic confirmed uh, just last week that season tickets have now completely sold out. So, you know, brilliant uh, support again, um, as was the case last season after a very tough season. The Celtic fans have shown up in their numbers. Myth, home and away kits uh, launched. Any thoughts on those? Some folk getting awfully upset about the home kit. I see that. I don't get it. I quite don't like it. Like you hope, Kat. Quite like it. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's not exactly earth shattering. Um, a a week at purchase a mm-hmm. home kit. You can only pre-order. It's not out to Friday, as in to be able to yeah. actually get it. Um, I don't like it. Folk, folk just go mental. Something. To, it's it's a long pre-season. Nothing. Something to whinge about. A couple, couple of belters. No. All right yeah. for me. I like a bit whinging myself. Any to be fair. any news in the third. No, you normally get a wee look here, there. I think there's been a couple of kind of fan floaty, though. I think this is the ah, you know, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff, you know. If you yeah. want to get the crayons out and do a wee concept oh, for yeah, us, yeah, yeah. throw something up there. Da yeah. fa be. Right, yeah. Here we go. Um, that's Aiden, as I'd mentioned there. Whether it be next week or the week before, we will definitely do something about our predictions for the, the season ahead. And, you know, maybe Paddy and some of the guys can join us for that. And we'll look at, you know, things like, you know, who you think the player of the year will be, the surprise package, young player, etc. And that could be interesting as the, as the squad really starts to take shape and we see any new additions. Last year, I think me and Paddy were debating at this time uh, who was going to be top scorer at Lee Griffiths and I'll be a Yeti. <laughs> Turns out we're both wrong there. <laughs> so it shows where we're tune at. Tune in uh, for more uh, searing insights. Yeah. <laughs> That's your levels in terms of predictions. Uh, James, just like that, you know, first episode just about done. What's your final thoughts for the week? Just looking forward to seeing how the next couple of weeks goes in, in terms of those players we've not seen as much of as we want. Um, I think McCarthy's in there, by the way, as well. McCarthy, Adiguchi, Turnbull, those kind of guys. Um, see how they perform. Johnson will be in there as well. Question marks. We'll come back to that next week. Um, yeah, just looking forward to enjoying football, being back in your telly and, and then get back to games proper. Yeah, definitely. Miff, like your hero Greg Taylor, it looks like you live to see another season. Are you hopeful it's going to be a good one? I am. Um, uh, just can't wait for it to get started. That's, that's it, it then. That's it. Short and sweet, just like you. So, like Jota and Cameron Carter-Vickers, we too are back for another season of All Things Celtic and look forward to bringing you all the big news in action as it unfolds in the season ahead. Thanks to Miff and James for joining me today and thanks to you for tuning in. Whether you're an existing fan of the show or if you're a brand new listener, your support goes a long way towards making what we do possible. We'll be letting you know soon of more ways you can support the Celtic Exchange in the weeks ahead, but in the meantime, from all of us here, we'll see you again next time.